Hi everyone, my name is Gracie and today I'm going to be answering 21 questions as part of a get to know me thing in advance of costume symposium or it might be cause tube symposium which is going to be happening later this summer and is going to be similar to last year's co-covid which I think is how a lot of people found my channel um, my videos about making stays were part of co-covid and so in advance of this year's event co cozy cosi still not 100% sure on the pronunciation. I'll get back to you on that. I am making a get to know me video and there's gonna be a lot of other get to know me videos from other channels and there'll be several playlists linked and so I'll link those down below. And I'll also link the Facebook page talking about what COSI is going to be. Um, so you guys can start getting excited for that. There's gonna be a lot of interesting costuming and sewing content on YouTube. I think it's the last weekend of August, but again, don't quote me on that. <laughs> So I guess let's get started with the questions. My first question is, what originally got you into costuming slash cosplay slash living history, etc.? Um, this is kind of funny. <laughs> when I was younger, my mom read me the Little House on the Prairie books, which looking back are like pretty colonialist, but I always wanted to dress up like Laura Ingalls Wilder because I liked the little bonnet and I liked the floofy skirts and I liked the hoop skirts. And so I would like go to garage sales and thrift shops and look for items that looked like what I imagined 1800s clothing look like, looked like. And I would buy bonnets if I found them at Goodwill or whatever. And that kind of grew. And then I was like, well, I know how to sew. So maybe I could try to sew some of my own stuff. And my original attempts were very bad. I'll see if I can find some pictures to put on the screen. But I eventually got better and then around the time that Hamilton came out, um, I must have been 15 or 16, I wanted to make a Hamilton dress. Um, and that's what really started getting me, that's what really got me into researching and like figuring out what was historical. I ended up not making a dress that was inspired by Hamilton, but the research that I did there kind of set me on the path to start making actual 18th century clothing. and. I guess the summer after that, I attended costume college for the first time in like my entirely hand-sewn dress and the rest is history. <laughs> the next question that we have is, what are your favorite materials to work with? I personally really enjoy working with linen and wool for different reasons. Linen is, I find it easiest to hand sew because it's really easy to finger crease and so I can like fold my hems the way I want them without using an iron or basting. But linen can be a little bit wibbly when it can get kind of wrinkled, which is annoying. And so I also really like working with wool because I find that wool always looks really nice when you work with it because it's often drapey and the texture is really nice. And I don't know, I just like I like the products that I make with wool, um, and so I generally like working with wool. The next question is, what project taught you the most? Um, that's kind of a hard one. I feel like there are several projects that taught me a lot, but of all the projects, of all the projects I've done, I think the one where I had to learn the most was when I recreated Maximilien Robespierre's 1790 portrait because menswear is its whole own thing. And the first version of that that I made was very bad. Like the jacket was not very well fitted and it was bad. But then I remade it for costume college that next year and uh, my jacket ended up being pretty good. Like the fit was not very good, but it looked nice. And that was that was a big point of pride for me because it had been it had been a rough project. I had like stayed up the entire night before Halloween um, and promptly fell asleep during a calculus test at school in my Robespierre costume, but I won the school costume contest. Um, so mixed bag, <laughs> um, but that project definitely taught me the most. The next question is, do I prefer draping, drafting, or using commercial patterns? I probably do a mix of all three, um, I definitely use commercial patterns and drafting more because I find those easier, but I have draped before. Um, I use both commercial patterns, like big four patterns, like simplicity and that sort of thing. But I've also recently gotten more into like buying indie patterns. I used to try to draft everything that I made, like all my 18th century dresses, I would try to draft myself. But now as I'm trying to get into new eras, I am more appreciative of patterns that people are selling and I'm more willing to buy those patterns rather than trying to draft from a book. 
For example, I bought the pattern for the Augusta stays and I love those. I don't think I could have drafted anything better. So it's a mix of the, it's a mix of all of them. The next question is, are you team cut or team trace for pattern pieces and pattern paper? I sometimes will trace my pattern piece onto my fabric. Um, depend if it needs to be really precise, I will trace it. But if it's not super precise, I will just pin my pattern piece to the fabric and cut around it. And the next question is pattern weights or pins. I use pins. I don't have a rotary cutter, so I don't weigh my patterns down. I just uh, pin them. Sometimes if I'm tracing, I will try to weigh my pattern down, but most of the time I'm cutting things out, having pinned the pattern to the, the, pattern to the fabric. <laughs> And the next question is, how many pieces are lurking in your UFO bin? And for those who don't know, UFO stands for unfinished object. So it's projects that haven't been completed. And I think this might be fun to go and grab and check out. So give me a second. Okay. And we're back. I, this is not a very big bin. It's a drawer. I have a few other things that don't fit in here. I have a quilted petticoat that I'm working on, although I've actually been working on that, so I don't know if that counts as an unfinished object. Um, but I have a cap by Virgil's Fine Goods that I've been working on, on and off. Um, I have some like ruffle that's hemmed for nothing. I have a couple of neckerchiefs that need to be hemmed. Um, I have two men's waistcoats in here. Um, and then I also have like two random projects from classes that I took. One of them is some tambour. I was learning how to tambour and I never finished the veil, but I think I'll probably finish that eventually. The other one is a muff that I have never finished. But again, I, I would be surprised if I didn't eventually finish those. I'm generally pretty good at finishing up unf unfinished objects. Aside from these, I also have several things where it's like, this is a project that's done but needs to be revised or refit. I have several dresses that don't fit very well anymore where I need to basically take out, take them out or put on new sleeves. And I don't count those as UFOs because the project is done, but it needs to be redone. Um, so I'm not gonna count those, but I don't know. This is not very many UFOs. I know a lot of people have like a big closet full of unfinished projects. <laughs> And the next question is, what era or genre would you like to make a costume out of still? Um, and I, I've i been wanting to do more medieval costuming. I have a medieval kirtle that's like mostly done, but then the fit wasn't very good. And so I had to like redo it. And oh, that's another UFO. Um, I forgot to count that one because that's in a different place. And I've been working on that on and off. Um, and I'd like to make more medieval clothes after that. I'd like to make like the medieval shift to go under it and maybe some whipples, which are like the veils and that sort of thing. And I'd like to also make some more dresses. I'd also like to try dyeing my own fabric to make medieval clothes because that sounds super cool. <laughs> um, but yeah, I think medieval is my next big interest. The next question is, what is your biggest sewing or crafting pet peeve? Um, I really hate cutting things out. I find it super uncomfortable. Sometimes I cut things out on my dining room table and that's less uncomfortable, but if I'm cutting something out that's pretty large, I have to cut it out on the floor and it gives me back pain. Um, I don't like that. I guess another pet peeve somewhat is taping together printed PDF patterns because I also have to do that on the floor and it gives me back pain. And the next question is, what is your favorite tool to use? Uh, hands down, my iron. Ironing is the best and it makes everything better. <laughs> and our next question is, what costume would you like to revisit? I would really like to revisit my red and blue shot silk reading out. I really liked it when I made it and I think it, it's, I still really like it. I still think it looks really nice, but I would like to possibly refit the sleeves because I think I could fit the sleeves better now than I could then. and. I don't think it fits anymore, so that's always a problem. Um, and I would also like to reshape the bodice um, because the shape of the bodice is not super historical and I know I could do better. 
And I would also like to redo the buttons. When I made those buttons, um, I didn't know how to do, what is the word? It's like thread covered buttons. And I guess I still don't know how to do it, but I feel like I could learn. Um, I'd like to redo them with thread covered buttons because the current buttons that are on there are US quarters that are covered in fabric so that they would be um, all the same size. And they're super heavy because coinage is really heavy and it's like it like weighs down the front of the dress and I don't like that. Um, so I definitely like to revisit that project. And the next question that we have is, what is the best sewing tool you have ever invested in? Um, I'm gonna be a little bit cheesy here and say myself because hand sewing is what I do most of all. And so like making sure that I'm taking care of my hands and not like over straining them and like trying to sit with good posture so I don't get back pain, uh, that makes sewing much better. Um, <laughs> so I guess investing in myself. <laughs> I don't have any, I don't have very many super fancy sewing tools. I have like a sewing machine, but I don't have any fancy tools. So I feel like myself as a sewing tool is probably what I have to answer there. Um, and the next question is, what is the most satisfying technique? Um, I personally enjoy like whip stitching or felling stitches on linen just because I find them super satisfying to do. Oh, or stroked gathers. Stroked gathers are difficult and painful, but the final product our next question is, do you pick a project and then procure materials, or do you collect materials and then let them speak to you? I do a little bit of both. If I have a project in mind, I will purchase materials for that project. But I also, if I see something that I'm like, I'm pretty sure I would use that, I don't, and I have the money to buy it, I don't not buy it. That being said, when I buy something, I usually have something in mind vaguely. But unless it's like a super concrete project, I'm often willing to change the destination of a fabric. For example, um, I bought some Dimity linen at Burnley and Trowbridge when they had like an in-person sale back when that was a thing. Um, and I had intended to make an 18th century jacket, but now I'm thinking I'd rather have a petticoat. So like there's often some intention behind what I buy, even if it's not super planned out, but that intention is not always uh, super strong, I guess would be the right word. And our next question is, what are your goals or plans moving forward? Um, one thing that I'd like to learn is I'd like to get better at tailoring, which is a different skill than sewing. And so I'd like to learn how to make tailored jackets and that sort of thing, because I think that sounds really nice. And one day I'd really like to learn how to make historical shoes like medieval shoes and 18th century shoes because they there are there are good reproductions available on the market but they're expensive and they're not there's not as much variety as there was in the period and I'd like to I'd like to try to make unique shoes that I can't find for sale. The next question is scissors or a rotary blade. I think I mentioned this when I talked about pinning versus pattern weights but I use scissors. I don't have a rotary blade or a rotary mat. Um, I think they sound kind of nice, but at the same time, I don't mind cutting with scissors. I know a lot of people that gives them like hand pain, but it doesn't bother me. So I see no reason to get a rotary blade. I also feel like I might cut myself on a rotary blade. Um, and the next question is, do you have any bad sewing habits? Um, I think that my probably worst sewing habit is I don't like making mock-ups. Um, so oftentimes, unless it's like a totally new pattern to me, um, I oftentimes won't make a mock-up and I'll just like bait, uh, draft it based on something that I've already made and then I will like alter it as I'm going. And that usually works pretty okay for me, but sometimes it doesn't work and like the sleeves don't fit. So that's not the best habit. Our next question is, do you sew over your pins or take them out as you go? Um, I do a mix of both. <laughs> if I am going slowly, I will take the pins out as I'm stitching. If I'm not, I will stitch over the pins and sometimes break my needles on my sewing machine. So that's a bad sewing habit, there you go. <laughs> and question, the next question is, do you put your pins in parallel to the seam line you're sewing or do you pin perpendicular? Um, 
I pin perpendicular if I'm sewing by machine. If I'm sewing by hand, I do whatever makes sense in the specific context. <laughs> and our next question is tea, coffee, or chocolate? I assume that means hot chocolate rather than like bars of chocolate because that wouldn't make sense as a category. Um, I drink tea most commonly. I have a cup of tea here. <laughs> um, but sometimes I do like to indulge in a little bit of hot chocolate. Coffee gives me a stomach ache though, so I don't really drink coffee. And our last question is, what do you like to watch or listen to while sewing? I sometimes watch YouTube videos while I'm sewing. Um, I like, uh, I like kind of like informational videos. Like I, I like watching Crash Course sometimes, or sometimes I watch like videos um, that are like kind of like book reviews or like people talking about what they're reading because I like reading and I like discovering new books through YouTube. I also watch other cause tubers and people talking about historical sewing on YouTube. Um, there's a lot of great content out there. And I also sometimes watch cooking videos depending on my mood. Um, I feel like there's a lot of kind of fun cooking videos and I like to cook sometimes. So it's nice to learn a little bit. But more commonly, I listen to podcasts while I sew because I love listening to podcasts. I read a lot of books and I don't do audiobooks, but I love podcasts. Um, I do like daily news podcasts. I like, like The Daily by New York Times and Today Explained by Vox. I also like some of the more uh, occasional podcasts that are kind of deeper dives on politics and policy, like Vox's The Weeds or The New York Times' Ezra Klein Show. I find that he interviews um, a lot of really interesting people, so I like that podcast. I also do some like history podcasts, like um, Stuff You Missed in History Class, and then I also do a few kind of lefty politics podcasts. Um, and I think those are all the questions. So if you have any questions that you'd like me to answer in perhaps a future Q&A, please leave them in the comments below. And don't forget to check out other people's 21 questions videos. You can meet a lot of new cause tubers in advance of Kosai. I need to learn how to pronounce that. <laughs> and yeah, I hope that you have a good rest of your day. Thank you to you for watching and thank you to Ollie for helping film and edit this video. And I will see you in the next video.